Welcome again, everyone, to Mike Montagna on Mathematically Perfected Economy and Absolute Consensual Representation. My proof of a singular monetary solution was the first online monetary reform presence some 10 years before the advent of today's formal Internet. Though from its inception, Mathematically Perfected Economy was a proof of singular solution, Later instances of my work have become the most plagiarized monetary reform thesis of the present world. My original thesis and proof that any purported economy subject to interest inevitably terminates itself under terminal sums of insoluble debt is now broadly accepted and even commercially imitated across the world. However often its plagiarists miscite it or pretend always without proof of qualification to integrate it into contending propositions of solution, the inevitable faults of which my work inherently proved as much as 43 years ago. I am the original 1968 architect of Mathematically Perfected Economy, founder of People for Mathematically Perfected Economy, and author of the present worldwide mandate for Mathematically Perfected Economy and Absolute Consensual Representation. Material addressed by this program, therefore, generally relates to my original 1968 mathematic proofs. A. That any purported economy subject to interest itself precipitates its own complete and inevitable failure under inevitably terminal sums of artificial debt. And B. That there is one and one only integral solution for the categoric faults of the pretended economies which have been imposed upon the world, a singular solution which, owing to the inevitable means of developing solution, for over 35 years we have called mathematically perfected economy. Diverse facts, conclusive case studies, and exceedingly comprehensive, accountable models, therefore, Prove that mathematically perfected economy is the only way to rescue the present world, not only from inevitable monetary failure, but from vast, persistent political corruption, which is even a perpetual obligation of the present monetary crimes against us. Furthermore, then, owing to the inevitable failure which the work before us accurately projected from breach of principle so long ago, Hardly will we be able to solve any of the world's further problems in necessarily timely manners unless we adopt mathematically perfected economy immediately. For even our technical abilities and ethical disposition to do so can only be defeated by the vast manifesting failure before us. It is incumbent upon all responsible citizens, therefore, to master the issues we present here, for humanity is perched at a critical juncture of the vastest implications for which 
there is but one demonstrable recourse. In our futility, many of us still hold out hope that even in the midst of a long, enduring, and entrenched abuse of power and principle, somehow, nonetheless, ostensibly representative governments across the world are actually somehow still disposed to deliver absolute consensual representation. Even as we are denied the very processes by which we the people could ensure representation, even in the midst of such breach of power. Even as this denial must involve both purposes and strategies, our ever untoward hope that facts of singular justice will prevail over candidates and officers who ascend to power to persistently deny us representation has already preserved the means of our own terminal exploitation for centuries. The lie of economy which serves these purposes and strategies, nonetheless, is no more than a pseudoscience wholly bereft of formal proof and theorem. Therefore, it is in our understanding of the lies, faults, and solutions alone that we can prevail. For those who even now repeat its purpose lies are not only wholly unfit to pretend they can engineer actual bona fide solution. The even more unbecoming fact that even at the brink of a failure they have so long denied, they would pretend they can rescue terminal failure and dispossession under artificial indebtedness by heaping further debt upon the people in no more than the name of rescue is on the contrary no more than to perpetuate the fatal crime by no more than pledging a false hope which they can never qualify because the system they perpetually perpetuate is inherently terminal. It would hardly be wise then for us to presume this fact yet has no part in shaping the further deceptions which are purposely heaped upon the people. Change we can believe in across all deeds in history has always been indigenous to nothing less than proof of solution. None of the perpetrators prove or even attempt to prove a fact of solution. On the contrary, long existent obvious needs for solution and even a long-existent proof of one and one only integral solution to the categoric faults of today's pretended economies are met only with evasion. Both self-evident facts are met with no more than evasion then because representation is not the object of governments which preside instead to perpetuate what is no more than an ever unjustified and ever unascended means of even terminal exploitation. Today, therefore, governments persist in this even terminal abuse of power, and they do this characteristically by no more than evasion, therefore, explicitly because there is no valid argument whatever against a need and fact of one and one only mathematically perfected economy. Thus, in the obligatory diligence of exploring the potential facts of either dutiful service or intentional abuse of the people, over 40-odd years of advocating a fact of inevitable failure and singular solution, every United States President since and including Gerald Ford has been presented my original proof of one and one only monetary solution in mathematically perfected economy as a singular, immediate, and even virtually costless solution for the categoric faults of the inherently terminal systems of exploitation which have been imposed upon us. And so, we must account for this plausible and evident disposition to perpetuate the terminal escalation of injustices, which are incumbent to the present lie of economy, if we, the people, are ever to secure actual justice. 
What, for instance, is the actual, just, and even inherently beneficial nature of a promissory obligation? Only by understanding and abiding by the facts and principles of natural, unexploited promissory obligations can we prosper to the extents we can and deserve. Only by understanding and abiding by the facts and principles of natural, unexploited promissory obligations, in fact, is true free enterprise or just reward even possible. How can these vital principles possibly be sustained, then, by an obfuscation of the promissory obligation, which instead, merely for maintaining a vital circulation, inherently multiplies artificial indebtedness in proportion to remaining capacity to survive escalated artificial indebtedness, as we are forced to maintain that vital circulation, by perpetually borrowing principal and interest back into circulation as inherently increasing sums of artificial debt, perpetually increased so much as periodic interest on an ever-escalated and ultimately terminal sum of artificial debt. These are the issues before us. Likewise, they are the issues which are resolved by mathematically perfected economy and mathematically perfected economy only. And they are the questions which purportedly representative governments around the world cannot answer. They are also questions which were answered with absolute certainty over 40 years ago in the very proposition of singular solution before us. No responsible citizen, therefore, can abstain from the challenge before us to decide absolutely any question of actual solution that we may unite and establish the only things which can either service or comprise actual representation. No just citizen would not benefit immediately and even to extreme extents by the obligatory opportunity to immediately establish mathematically perfected economy. Not only because mathematically perfected economy averts the present inevitable failure, but because mathematically perfected economy and mathematically perfected economy alone establishes a singular fact of monetary justice, which in fact may be projected to immediately increase general liquidity by some approximately 12 times. What representative government would deny its people such a thing? From its inception, the proposition of mathematically perfected economy was a proof of singular monetary solution. Its original exclusive arguments, nonetheless, are now the most plagiarized monetary thesis in history. In 1983 and 4, decades before the present deluge of 11th hour pretenders of solution, I provided the Reagan administration with computer models which were and remain capable of calculating the maximum possible lifespan of any pretended economy subject to the obfuscations of what we call a central banking system. These original proofs, complete with source code, remain available from dissented work at the contiguous online presences of people for mathematically perfected economy, perfecteditconomy.org. And of course, we can run the same data in these models today to replicate their vital projections. Nonetheless, then, in 1983 and 4, these original models projected from early 1980s data that the present monetary failure would transpire, even globally, at approximately 2010 AD. As a consequence, 